Okay, so I got it. I was saying that we're not serving a, a deaf God. That we need to go to him and tell him what our problem is. We going through a situation. We being beat. He's telling us that we, his word is telling us. He said in the word that the only way we can get a divorce is through fornication. So, Lord, this man is beating me up. What should I do? Help me, Lord. And being that we're not serving a deaf God. Now, I don't know what my thoughts was when I was saying, when I brought in that omnipotent, but I'm going to use it anyway in this thought that I'm saying now. That being that he's everywhere and he knows what's going on, He's all powerful. A nipponent means that he's all powerful. So that means he is able to take you through. He has that power to take you through. And now I don't know what happened. I lost that. I lost that. Okay, I, I lost that scripture, so I got to find it. 1 Corinthians 7. No. Okay, Ephesians, the note on 10, 13. Okay, here we are. Okay, so pray for God's help. Okay, run from everything you know. Four, pray for God's help. See? And that's what I was saying. That's the problem. We're not praying. We're not praying. We're not going to God. Asking him for help in these situations. I was in an abusive relationship. Save. Unsave. But once it returned back to me. Not to say that it was abusive, but verbally abusive, because that's a form of abusiveness too, verbally, right? But I just want to FYI this to you, that abusive starts mentally first and verbally first, and then it becomes physically. So in between that mental and verbally, physical can step in, but one of them has to be taken place first. A, a, abusive... A man to just straight out hit you, y'all in the park chilling, it ain't gonna happen. You had it it may happen and surprise you, but the only reason why it's surprising you because you did not want to take heed to the signs and warnings that you got prior to that hit. And you would have knew automatically that the things that he was saying or the mental things he was telling you to get you to see mentally was the beginning of the physical abuse. So because you was not paying attention to that. Here come a slap in the park. Here come a push in the house. But it was already there. Already. So now when these things. When you see these things. Whether you're saved. Whether you're unsaved. And you marry this man. You're, you're going to see these things. It's, you, it's going to come up. And now it's a choice for you. As I read prior. Marriage is not for everybody. And God doesn't approve marriage for everybody. And he's not saying that everybody should get married. But he would bless that marriage if you decide that's what you want to do. And he will bless you more so if you honor that marriage. But if you feel like, oh, I'm getting out of this because this is happening. And this is not what I wanted to be. And this is not what I expected it to be. I don't care if you was married for, for 15 years, 20 years, 60 years. And the 61st year, you decide, I want to leave this man. Mm, okay, so let's go on. Pray for God's help. And five, seek friends who love God and can offer help when you are tempted. See? And a lot of people don't want that. Because they... What's that, an L? Okay. Because they losers. They want to just deal with... The fact that things are working the way they want it to work. So they become losers in the marriage. Because as soon as it's not working the way they want it to work. And it's not happening the way that they want it to happen. Then they cop out. They go. 
they sit back and they start thinking about all the things that happened prior to that moment. And now they're going to make a final decision which involves their lives. And now they're going against the word of God because the word of God said this particular thing. And now because you don't went 10, 15 years holding all of that in and not addressing it and not giving it. When I say addressing it, addressing it to God, not praying on it, asking God for guidance. And now you just decide, I'm going to not go out the picture. I'm going to do my own decision. And this is my decision. Here's your paper. Okay, let's go on. Now, once you seek friends, you got to seek them. Because everybody ain't your friend. So now when you have a friend that's helping you, get through this particular situation and giving you word of knowledge, giving you word of wisdom, giving you spiritual intervention, and you care not to take it, then the results is going to be on you. Lord Jesus, I don't want to see the results of this situation. Because it's going to be a result. And it ain't going to be so good. And I'm seeing it already. Okay, let's go on. Running from attempt, running from a tempting situation is your first step on the way to victory. Tempting situation. So if you're being tempted, if you're being tempted then you need to run from that situation. You don't need to stay in it. You don't need to think that you got all this strength and you can make it through it because you know God. Or should I say because you know of God. You got to know God to get, to be able to make it through temp temptations because he'll make a way of escape. He'll make a way of escape. He'll make a way of escape. I pulled up some videos for you. I didn't ask nothing about no videos. First Corinthians 10 and 13. See, I like to get the word. So y'all will see I'm bringing this from the word. 10 and 13 said, They have no temptation... Taking you, but such. Let's go to the 12th verse, the front of that. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. So you, you going around, yeah, I got this. Yeah, he may be slapping me, but I got this. I'm going to be able to do this. Not, and when I say I'll be able to do this, I know what I'm going to do. See, each time he slap you, you come up with whatever decision that you had planned from the beginning. Now it's coming into effect, especially if you done been together for 15, 16 years, or five years, or 13 years, whatever. The sincerity of the abuse brings back, brings out a conclusion to it. So now if you're not seeking God so that he can give you the right conclusion, so that you will come out victorious... then you will wind up being tempted and wind up failing. That's where it say, think if you stand it. There, 13, there have no temptation taken you, but such as it's common to men. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. See, this is why. This is this, this is why I'm able to talk about it. This is why I'm able to say no. You don't have to get a divorce because you're getting abused. Because God is not. That's a temptation. Abusiveness is a temptation, and it's a mental temptation. Yeah, the physical comes after the fact, but it starts mentally and verbally, and even verbally goes into the mental part because what you hear goes to your mind. 
That's why I said faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in order to have a strong faith in God, you got to go through his word. You got to hear his word. So that's the importance of going to church so that you can hear his word so that your faith will be built. So when these things happen, you'll be able to resist. So he is going to make a way. You may not see it, but when you least expect it, the man will get up and leave. He may be augering you down and you scared he's going to touch you. God will make a way of escape and get that man out of there. Or the phone ring or somebody knock on the door. Because God is protecting you so that you won't walk around with your black eye and all this as a saint. You won't walk to church with black eye. And... It may happen. Don't get me wrong. There may be some people out there that are saints or are, are Christians and are going through abuse and walking around with black eyes or whatever. You don't have to. You don't have to. You know, these things may happen, but God will, the word, let me read it again. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. So you ain't the only one being abused. You see what I'm saying? This is a common thing that's going around society. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't know how to deal with it because society doesn't deal with it. What society tell you to do? Get a divorce. What society do? Go to counseling, marriage counseling. But your only true counselor is Jesus Christ. Who will not suffer you to be tempted. Above that ye are able. So you may think, oh my God, this, this, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because I know when I get home, when I get home, I know he's going to be mad with me. Because I stayed out in church half the night. Been out too long. And you may try to get home in time. You don't fix his dinner and everything. And you kind of say to yourself, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to encounter when I get home, but I want you to work it out. When you get home, that man just is happy or that man sleep. That man didn't even think about you. That's a way of escape. Okay. Running from a temp tempting situation is your first step on the way to victory. Let's see what 2 Timothy 2 and 22 says. So 2 Timothy 2 and 22 says, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness. Do what's right. And they're talking about youthful lust. So that can deal with married people, young people that's thinking about getting married. Okay? And even if you're an old woman and thinking about youthful lust, flee it. Trying to get involved with a younger man. Mm -mm. Flee also youthful lust. So that's a lust. Oh, I want a younger man because he know how to do it. I want a younger man because he'll make me look young. I'll make me feel, no, God is the only one that make you look. Not how you really look. Okay? Okay. Flee also youthful lust and follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So they, <laughs> we don't even get into that. Okay, so I think that's it. All right, so, all right, so I think that's all that I wanted to say in reference to that marriage thing. So just, just my conclusion again, final conclusion, which I'm going to end it this time, is that situations like that, you know, it has to build up. It had to been built up. It had to start from somewhere. You see what I'm saying? It had to come from somewhere. You know, it's nothing that comes out of a blues. You see what I'm saying? And even if you're dealing with a man or a woman, and this man, the only reason why I'm focused on men because we don't hear too much about women abusing men. So with me saying this, if you are a man that's being abused, so then you can take it to that concept. But I'm going to be bringing it from a woman's point of view of being abused by a man so these things may happen because they is going to happen because they're sinful and sin is going to continue to go on in the world way after we all die uh and the next generation comes in and they pass on and the next generation comes in because 
generations, we are from a generation. Not only are we from the generation of our parents, we are from the generation of all... Oh, being nosy. We are from the generation of prior times. So when you give your life to God, then you become an heir to God. Now you become the sons of God. It says, there's a song that says, be loved, be loved, be loved. Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. For we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, we the sons of God. And then there's a scripture that says that. Join the ears. Let me find it. Join the ears. With Christ. So Romans 8, 17. See, I'm trying to bring the word to you so you got it. So you have it. Romans 8 and 17. Which that's the next scripture. The next book we'll be reading. Romans 8 and 17 says. And if children then. Heirs. Heirs of God. And join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be also glorified with him. So we become part of God's kingdom when we give our lives to him. So once we become adopted into the faith. Adopted and receive the Holy Ghost. Now we become the sons of God. And son is not in God's eyes as a man. It's a woman. You see what I'm saying? And being that they they look at God as being a man, in Revelation, it speaks on the bride of Christ. According to gotquestions.org, Christ, the bridegroom, has sacrificially and lovingly chosen the church to be his bride. Just as there was a betrothal period in biblical times during which the bride and groom were separated until the wedding, so is the bride of Christ separate from her bridegroom during the church age. I don't even know where that was being read from, but I'm trying to find a scripture. I know it's somewhere. In Revelation. Okay, so we got here Revelation 19. And by the way, Revelation was written by It's, it's 5 o'clock. Revelation 19, 6 through 9. Let me get Revelation 19. And we're talking about the Bride of Christ. Because I was saying that God is considered a man. So that means that he's coming back for his bride. And we are the church. So he's coming back for us. So we will be considered his bride. And not even talking about male or female. Just like I just said about the sons. We're the sons of God. So it don't has it don't have nothing just like the song say. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Let me see something. I'm trying to see if we have a scripture on the sons of God. Okay, so um, so it's a song about us being the sons of God. So there is no particular person. It's not a human being. Because see... We're only flesh because 
We only human because we got flesh on us. But it started out spiritually. And if you read in Genesis, you would see that it may be Genesis 3 or 4. Right? Somewhere up in Genesis. That he um, made clothes of skin. Now let me give you that because Genesis goes a long way. Clothes of skin. Hmm. Not clothes of skin. Let me see. He did. Three and twenty-one. Okay, so let me go back. First, let me speak about the bride. And then we'll go to the skin to explain that we are not. <clears throat> That's what Revelation 19 and 6, 19, 6 through 9. Let's see what John is saying. <clears throat> Six through nine says, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the sin, of the saints. So, we're, we're, as I said, that that's only for a little segment because I can't really get into that right now. So, um, cause when you get re revelation, revelation is deep. So, um, the bride of Christ is just like I said, we, we are the bride of Christ. He's coming back for us because we are not considered, we being that he is considered as a male and Jesus was a male in human form. So therefore the bride will be considered woman going with marriage. Okay. So now as far as us being spiritual, we will go over to... <coughs> where he made skin for Adam and his wife. Genesis 3 and 21, and I'm gonna close there. Genesis 3, we done been all over the place, so I'll come back to that scripture. Uh, we'll go and read Acts. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow because I don't be out all day tomorrow. I wonder if it's tomorrow that Michelle is supposed to be. Yeah, I think she says she got to work. Okay, but anyway, that's another thing I was saying. But anyway, what I said, 3 and 21. Genesis 3 and 21. And it says, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So that goes, that verse alone lets you know that Adam and Eve were spiritual beings. They was not human. That's why Jesus had to come down and go through Mary. And he had to go through a pure person. Because he had to go with someone. Apparently, Mary didn't have no sin. Okay? Apparently, Mary was not sinning. Okay? Because he could not. He had to find somebody that he could favor so that he could send his son through. Because everybody, apparently, there was something in everybody. And he could not find the particular, uh, he could not use anybody. So, Mary was the one. 
So, let me correct myself. But somebody write and say, well, how you know she wasn't sinning? I don't know. Because I wasn't living there. I don't know nothing about Mary. Never met her. And probably, and, and most likely never will. Because right now, she's probably a spiritual being up in heaven. Okay, so, I will never know that's Mary. But, um, in our... In our society, in our times now, due to the fact that Adam and Eve sinned, they were spiritual people. And see, if you go to, if you go to, and God said, let us make man in our image. 26 Genesis 1, 26, the creation of man. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's why we have the power over the enemy. I mean, over the animals, over the roaches, over the shrimps, over the fish, because God gave man that authority, starting with Adam. So look, he wasn't selfish. He didn't take it back. But since sin came into the world, the animals are now at an aggressive point in their lives that they have to be separated. They can't be with the humans because when Adam sinned, that took away that spiritual part where we could just... Adam probably could could have slept on the bed. Probably could lie with the lion and the lion lying with him if you read daniel in the lion's den that's a good example of how god tamed the lion so the lion wouldn't eat daniel but they hadn't fed the lion and god knows how long so that's why they threw at through adam threw daniel in there because they knew the lion was going to tear him up but that was an example to let us know that god can shut any lion up and I don't mean animal wise that come against us in human form shut the mouths of them they go and talk to their lives your name it don't matter so God created Adam and he created man in his image and his image is upright well let me put it this way not really upright his image thank you Holy Ghost his image is spiritual there we go no, no flesh. We wasn't animals. He did the animals and everything. But he wasn't animals. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so the fifth day is when he made all the animals and the birds and all that and all that. And filled the waters and all that stuff like that. The sixth day is when he made... No. The, the fifth day is when he made all the water creatures. The, the sixth day is when he made all the cattle. And the living creatures after they kind, every creeping thing, and the beasts of the earth. So that would be the bear. That would be the lion. You see what I'm saying? He making all these people, these things, upon the earth after the his kind. Not after him. So when he made the bear, he made a woman bear. When he made the, the lion, he made a lion bear after they kind. So he didn't put the the lion with the human being. No. Remember, humans, they made that. He didn't put the lion with the bear to multiply. Because it says, he and God created will. Da, 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 after that kind of... Da, 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 da. And filled the waters in the sea and let fowl multiply in the earth. So everybody multiplied after they kind. The sixth day, he made the, can- the cattle. And creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now God said let us make man in our image. He talking about himself and his son. Jesus Christ. So I'm here to tell you Jesus was up there in heaven with him. But Jesus probably was an angel sitting beside him. That's where Lucifer came in. All of them was up there. So that's why he said prepare me a body. Because he had no body. He couldn't come down and save the world in spirit form because we would have never saw him. Popping in and popping out. (laughs) 
That's why he had to go through Mary. So now, upon that, he made the man. He created man in his own image. The woman wasn't there. Male and female created he them. So then he said, bless them and be fructified. And bless them and multiply. But he made Adam through the breath of life. And he said it became a living soul. So now it's a soul walking around in the spirit body. That's why the soul is very important and needs to be saved. Because that's where all the emotions is at. And that's why God wants the mind, the heart, and the soul. And the might of us. The strength of us. Because he knows that he made man in his image and he gave man after they sinned to tilt the ground and the work and all that because that man can be able if they get saved and give their life to him will be able to help him out in the long run there's other men out there need help be able to Help the woman in the church. Help the woman at home, etc., etc. So we don't want to go wrong with that. So that is the Bible study for today. And I will come back probably tomorrow. And we will be reading Acts 1 through 5. Because I started my fast Monday reading Acts 6. So... I want you to see what went down prior to them getting the seven men and all what happened with Paul and all the different things that went down from the sixth chapter to the 28th. You, all, you already know Paul's, Paul's um, soul's conversion. So we need to go in the beginning when, when the disciples first met up. Because Saul wasn't in and Paul wasn't in the picture when Jesus, I mean, he was there, but he wasn't of importance because it wasn't time for him to come out yet. So we would start from the first chapter of Acts speaking about what happened and where it's taking place from and then we'll go on and we'll stop at the fifth and then next week, Monday, we going to start on Romans. So that means I got to read all five chapters tomorrow when I get home. Who knows? I may come back later on tonight and start a little bit of it. But see how interesting the Bible is? See how I wanted to, to go into the word of whatever I say and bring the word so that you won't be saying, Oh, where that's at? I never heard that before. I don't know nothing about marriage like that. He never said that we, we couldn't get no divorce or nothing like that. Well, it's in the Bible. And don't get me wrong. Everybody can have. You're entitled to have your own opinion. You're entitled to think whatever you choose to. And to make your own decision. Just make sure that the decision you make is what God wants. Until the next video. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell so you can see my next. Know when I bring my next video. Be blessed. Bye.